with you a couple things today about um, where Jesus is <laughs> where do you think he abides he well of course he abides in your heart if you're a Christian but I want to share with you from the book of Revelation <clears throat> chapter 1 and then uh, a little later on chapter 4 possibly you got to remember uh, well it does me uh, good to remember the fact that um, God is doing a whole new thing in the New Testament. <clears throat> uh, when the baptism of the Holy Ghost, when he came upon to give birth to the church in Acts, the second chapter, it's a whole new beginning in God dealing with mankind. In the Old Testament, it was the Jewish people. Now, uh, he kind of put them up on the shelf for a while, for a couple thousand years, which is two days to God. The point being, they rejected him. They, reje they rejected them. Mm. Anyway, so now the Lord is dealing with uh, mankind through the Gentiles. And the Apostle Paul started all, uh, God started the whole thing over again using the Apostle Paul to preach the gospel to the Gentiles. So the, whole, the first part of the book of Acts is all Jewish, and then in the 10th chapter or so, it says tra transitions from Peter and the, and the Jewish apostles to... Uh, to Saul, whose name is changed to Paul, and uh, become the rest of the book of Acts. And uh, and so the revelation of it has to do, and it's interesting to note that it's not the revelation of St. John, it's the revelation of Jesus Christ. Um, but anyway, of course, this is what's going to happen in the future. Um, people differ about their opinions about what it really means and that kind of thing, but it's the revelation of Christ and the, the dominant person or the dominant one in the book of Revelation is the Lamb. <laughs> the Lamb of God, Jesus Christ, who takes away the sin of the world. You know, it doesn't say sins. It says sin. The root of the matter. We, we, we're, we're, we're sinners. We're not sinners because we sin. We we're, we're sin because... Boy, what am I trying to say? sins is the result of us being a sinner and the sin principle in us is what makes us sinners but Jesus has come to destroy the very root of it the very root of it and the 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 the, the Adam nature is, is the, the cause of it that we all inherited from Adam and and, uh, and the whole world is thrown into this chaos uh, no, the Lord knew it would happen. He knows the end from the beginning, but it will, His divine intent was to, for it to be inhabited by the, the people and God relating to God. Now it's been kind of hampered, <clears throat> and it's coming back, <clears throat> though, <clears throat> and it'll happen the way He originally intended it. And uh, the point is now the Lord is calling the Gentiles unto himself through Christ Jesus. Is this interesting in the Bible and the Gospels it says that the, 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 <laughs> the people in authority back then did not receive Jesus, but it says the common people heard him gladly. I just love that. I consider myself a common person. <laughs> but well, that's a whole other thing in itself, how you look at yourself. Do you see yourself as a king and a priest? Glory to God, and do with power from the Lord, and on, from on high. And the Lord Christ Jesus himself, his spirit lives in us, and he empowers us to do these things, and work for God, and labor for God in his vineyard. And, and, and have the fellowship of the spirit, hallelujah to God, and the love of the spirit. To, uh, to help us through uh, the Christian walk. And Jesus says, I'm, 
I'm going to go away, but I won't leave you orphans. I'll pray the Father, and he'll send the Comforter unto you. Bless his glorious name. I won't leave you orphans. I will come to you. <laughs> he comes to us and abides with us forever and ever and ever. He'll never leave us nor forsake us, he said. The revelation of Jesus Christ, which God gave unto him to show unto his servants things which must shortly come to pass. And he sent and signified by his angel unto his servant John, who bear record of the word of God and of the testimony of Jesus Christ. I tell you, man, I get excited about it. Jesus is the one who we are looking for. Christ Jesus. So many distractions. <clears throat> Even churches would be people that are supposed to talk about God and and the way of salvation and how to live life. I don't know. They they don't focus. It seems like on Jesus. People people come by and knock on the door and they talk about this and that and everything. They, they're not centered on Jesus. They're not centered on Jesus. The Bible is centered on Jesus. <clears throat> The testimony of Jesus Christ and nobody else. And of the things that he saw. All right. Blessed is he that reads and they that hear the words of this prophecy and keep. That's three. Blessed is he that reads and hears and keeps the sayings which are written in this book. For the time is at hand. John to the seven churches. No, <laughs> there's seven churches. This is this is to the Gentiles. Even the Gospels, Jesus is mainly sharing with the with with uh, the uh, the Jewish people because he's the way. Remember, he said, "I'm sent not but for the lost sheep of the house of Israel." But the revelation of Saint of Jesus Christ is well it's to the whole world, but it's to the Gentiles. Now the Lord deals with the Israel too in the. In the uh, book of Revelation, the man child and that, and 144,000, but it's easy to get ahead of myself. John to the seven churches which are in Asia, grace. <laughs> ah. ah, man. You got about seven years. I mean, talk about the grace of God first. The law was given by Moses, but grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. Ah, ah, grace be unto you and peace from him which is and which was and which is to come and from the seven spirits over to God which are before his throne and from Jesus Christ who is a faithful witness and the first begotten from the dead and the prince of the kings of the earth unto him that loved us and washed us from our sins in his own blood and made us kings and priests unto God and the Father. To him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Unto him that loved us. The essence of the gospel, the essence of the Bible, the essence of existence on this planet is the love of God. Ah, but there's a snake and a lion, same person, different expression, running around seeking whom he may devour to distract and deceive and thwart and mess up or attempt to mess up God's plan. Don't let him. Get in Jesus Christ and trample on him. He told us to. John, uh, Luke 10, 19, Behold, I give unto you power to tread on serpents and scorpions over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. It's a promise. <clears throat> you got to get in Christ to have this kind of power. Be endued with power from on high, the power of the Holy Ghost. Glory to God. To quicken your mortal body. <laughs> I tell you what. Unto him that loved us and washed us from our sins in his own blood and has made us kings and priests unto God and his Father. 
Do you remember when Jesus rose from the dead? He says, don't touch me. And I haven't. And he says, I ascend to my God and your God, to my Father and your Father. <laughs> oh, people. Turn your eyes upon Jesus. Look full at his wonderful face. <laughs> For behold, he cometh with clouds, and every eye will see him, and they also which pierced him. And all kindreds of the earth shall wail because of him. Even so, amen. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, says the Lord, which is and which was and which is to come, the Almighty. People say Jesus isn't God. <laughs> they can't be reading this book correctly. Rightly dividing the word of truth, the Bible says. Jesus is talking. I am Alpha and Omega. Other places it talks about Jesus being Alpha and Omega. The beginning and the end says the Lord, which is and which, is and which was and which is to come, the Almighty. <sighs> and then John says, I was on the Isle of Patmos for the Word of God. And you know, they killed all the martyrs in the, in the beginning of the, of the, of, 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 in the, you know, in the first set, first or second century. The first century. They killed them all. All the apostles. They lost their lives for the gospel. They cru uh, crucified Peter upside down. He says, I don't want to, you know, <laughs> not the way my Jesus was. They're upside down. Nobody takes his place. Anyway, they couldn't kill John. <laughs> he lived to be about 90 years old. He's the beloved apostle, centered and focused on love. <sighs> Love, uh, Song of Solomon, love. <laughs> many, many waters can't quench love. I don't have time to read it, but anyway, love is the most powerful force in the universe, and God is love. Uh, I am Alpha and Omega, the Almighty. I, John, I was on the Isle of Patmos. Ah. Uh, your kingdom and tribulation, and then the kingdom of, and then the kingdom and patience of Jesus Christ was on the Isle of Patmos for the word of God and for the testimony of Jesus Christ. I was in the spirit on the Lord's day. <laughs> no more wonderful place can there be, people, than in God's spirit. Hallelujah. On the Lord's day. And I heard a voice behind me, a great voice, as of a trumpet, saying, I am Alpha and Omega, and the first and the last. What you see... <clears throat> What you see, write in a book and send it unto the seven churches which are in Asia, unto Ephesus, Smyrna, Pergamos, Thyatira, Sardis, Philadelphia, and Laodicea. And I turned to see the voice that spoke with me. Now we're talking about where is Jesus? Now he's in your heart, right? <clears throat> Man. <laughs> So John hears this great voice behind him saying, I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. And he turns to see who it is. I turn, and being turned, I saw seven golden candlesticks. And in the midst of the seven churches, one like the Son of Man. Huh? Where is he? He's in the midst of the churches. Uh, one like the Son of Man clothed with a garment down to the foot and gird about the chest with a golden girdle. His head and his hair were white as snow. His were, were, were white like wool, as white as snow. And his eyes were as a flame of fire and his feet like unto brass, as if they had burned in a furnace. And his voice like the sound of many waters. See, this is... This is the glorified Jesus. Mm, mm, mm. This isn't the one they're knocking around. His voice like the sound of many waters. <laughs> His voice is altogether lovely. You know, the Lord is just so many things. Here is, uh, <laughs> here is, 
In the Song of Solomon, all the ladies that are around the Shunammite woman uh, are, why are you so infatuated with, with this one that you love so? And she describes him to them. My beloved is white and ruddy, the chiefest among 10,000. His head is as most fine gold. His locks are bushy and black as a raven. His eyes are in the eyes of doves and by the rivers of waters, washed with milk and fitly set. His cheeks are as the bed of spices, as sweet flowers. His lips like lilies, dripping sweet-smelling myrrh. His hands are like gold rings set with burl. His uh, stomach is like a bright ivory overlaid with sapphires. His legs are as pillars of marble set upon sockets of fine gold. His countenance is as Lebanon, excellent as the cedars. His mouth, see, in the Revelation, is rushing waters. <clears throat> His mouth is most sweet. Yes, he is altogether lovely. Everything about Jesus is lovely. This is my beloved and this is my friend, O daughters of Jerusalem. His mouth is most sweet. Yes, he is altogether lovely. This is my beloved and this is my friend, O daughters of Jerusalem. <clears throat> and he had, let's see, his feet and his voice is a sound of many waters and he had in his right hand seven stars. Out of his mouth went a sharp two-edged sword. <clears throat> Hebrews 4.12 And his countenance was as the sun shining in his strength. <laughs> yeah. Oh, God. Uh, you remember Paul on the Damascus road was knocked off his horse by the glory of the Lord Jesus. And it was a midday in the hot, out over there, it's hot in the sun and all the the glory of Jesus appeared and was knocked him off his horse or knocked him down off his walking above the brightness of the sun. When I saw him, I fell at his feet as dead, and then he laid his right hand upon me, saying unto me, Fear not, I am the first and the last. I am he that liveth and was dead, and behold, I am alive forevermore. Amen. And I have the keys of hell and of death. Write the things which you see. He took him away from the devil. And the devil had the death and all. He was, and everybody was scared to, to die in the Old Testament and all. And then Hebrews says he took him away from the enemy. Write the things which you have seen and the things which are and the things which shall be hereafter. The mystery of the seven stars which you saw in my right hand and the seven golden candlesticks. The seven stars are the angels of the seven churches and the seven ch candlesticks which you saw are the seven churches. The point I'm trying to make is, <coughs> where is Jesus? <laughs> He's in the midst of the churches. In the Old Testament, they went to a place. Uh, made, you know, they went to a place where the Lord said he would meet with them. It's, um, that's a whole study in itself. Of course, they had a portable uh, moving place, a kind of a tent. In Moses' day, and then they came into the Promised Land, and Solomon built the temple. Gorgeous temple. Anyway, and, uh, they still had to go to that place, and the Lord would meet with them and bless them. And now he says, we are the temple of God. Though we take God everywhere we go. <laughs> Isn't that exciting? Oh, Lord Jesus is always with me. To protect them when you're in a car and in treeways and cars whizzing by. And he's always with you, always with you. You're walking with those. Yes, the New Testament was vastly different than the Old. You walk with God. He's with you in fellowship. Well, they could, even in the Old Testament, they could do that. Uh, a select few. But now, who, whoever, every Christian has the presence of God in, inside them. And, and the Lord is with them always. Remember it says of Enoch? Enoch walked with God. And bam, the Lord took him. <laughs> Oh, my. we have no idea how much God loves us people, but he does. You have to believe it and receive it because it says so. He loves you so. He loves you so. That's the essence of the whole Bible, why Jesus went to the cross. Why? Because to separate 
sin separates a person from God, but Jesus took all of the sin upon himself and died on Calvary's tree a couple days ago, 2,000 years ago. And now your sin has been paid for. Your debt has been paid. You now have, through Christ, free access to God, free access to the Lord, and God to bless you and come to you and help you and, and nurture you and whatever need you have is in Jesus. Because the Bible says in him, the whole full, all the fullness of the Godhead it dwells in Christ Jesus. But uh, you have to get in Jesus first that way. You, know? you have to possess Jesus for your very own. How do you do that? Well, you receive gifts, don't you? Jesus is the gift of God. You're not going to let this gift stand at the table, are you? Aren't you going to receive the gift and say, Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father, for Jesus. But the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord, Romans 6.23. You have to receive him. You get married to your spouse. You get married to Jesus. Eh? Well, marriage is a symbol, symbolic of the relationship Jesus has with every individual person. He loves you, wants to relate to you, but he can't until you come. You have to have that. He knocks and you have to open the door and allow Jesus. He doesn't come barging in. If you don't want Jesus, well, he still wants you because you're blocking the access. Not smart. Believe and receive Jesus and you'll be live forever. <laughs> And he'll enhance uh, your everyday life here on earth. Now, when you die and go to heaven, when, uh, it can't be better than that. It's simple, isn't it? It's a love story. It's not all complicated. People go to theological schools for years and years and years to find out about God, not find about who he really is. Huh? Ph. Can you imagine a, a Ph.D. is a doctorate in theology? That doesn't mean you're saved, I don't think, does it? I mean, those big schools of learning. And well, I am in the East. <laughs> Yale, Princeton, and Harvard. Those schools were began and came into being to produce preachers in the 1700s and whenever they came over here you know, a long time ago to establish this nation, this glorious nation built upon the Lord Jesus Christ and religious freedom. That's why they came here, escaped religious persecution. Now they're getting persecuted all over again. <laughs> oh, my Jesus. But uh, that, those, those places of learning were established solely to produce preachers of the gospel. I learned that years ago in the Bible correspondence class. Now, I think it's way different than that now. But the, still, the Lord still loves the people. I tell you what, man, the love of God is something you'll never comprehend. Even when we get to heaven, we're just going to be in awe about how much God loves mankind. We're made in His image. That's, that's, I'm, I'm convinced that that's why. The, nothing else in the universe did God say He made in His image. Only mankind. That's what makes us valuable. It's like, a, it's like there's a spark of God in every human being. <clears throat> but <clears throat> you live, you're, you're born, you live, and you die, you're born, live, die, eat, sleep, drink, walk, go to work. Is there a point to it? Yeah. The point is to serve the Lord, but it's all that abstractions to keep you from doing that. That's, that the, Jesus said he that would keep his life will lose it. He that loses his life for my sake will find it. So if you lose your life in Christ, you'll find it. <laughs> oh, that's so much more meaningful. I mean, it doesn't mean necessarily that you're going to go preach the gospel, but your lifestyle will become Christian, and therefore, then therefore you're a preacher and an ambassador for Christ. Because you just share the Lord with everybody all the time. Your lifestyle becomes different. People say, well, you know, you become a Christian. And now, whatever you do, you can be a Christian while you're doing it. Doctor, lawyer, sheet metal worker, carpenter, plumber, painter, office worker of some kind, have a business. You just be a Christian while you're doing what you do. 
and bless the Lord and thank him and worship him <laughs> for blessing you. He says that he'll bless you with the blessings of Abraham. Read it and John begins with uh, Genesis 12, how God called people all run off on their own so God started over with Abraham. Well, again with Abraham, he produced one people and through them the gospel was to be preached. But they kind of, I don't know, hoarded it and didn't really move out with it. But God promised Abraham, read it, and I'll bless you and make your name great. And and, 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 the, and, and if you're in Christ, you, you're in on those blessings as well, the blessing of Abraham. 